It is 5.30, Monday, August 9th, 2021, and I call this special board meeting of the Mercedes Independent School District Board to order. Roll call to establish quorum. Myself, Rachel Trevino, President, Brian Acosta, Vice President, Lucy Delgado, Secretary, Rick Garza, he's on virtual, Pete Martinez III, Trustee, Eddie Howell is on I'm sorry, virtual, right, Mr. Howell? Okay. Yeah. And Oscar Hernandez. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance by yeah. Trustee Got Mr. Garza and invocation by Mr. Acosta. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather today to discuss the item that's before us. Allow us to make the decision that is in the best interest of our students, our staff, and our community. Bless our students and our staff as they are preparing to return to school, especially those that are involved in extracurricular activities and have already begun the 21-22 school year. We ask you to bless our students, our staff, and our community. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Do we have anybody signed up for open forum and signs? Okay. Nobody. Okay. Next on the agenda is action agenda. A business office. One discussion and possible action regarding RFP number 042121-355, Security Guard Services. Mrs. Mendiola. Good evening, Madam President, Board of Trustees, Faculty. Madam President, at this time, administration is recommending rejection of RFP number 04212-355, Security Guard Services. Okay. May I have a motion, please? May I have a motion from the floor? Okay. So we go for another motion? Okay. May I have another motion for the security guard services? Can I make a motion that we uh, select uh, 205 solution? 205, I'm sorry, what was the name of it, Mr. Hernandez? Solution. Solution. Okay, I have a motion. 205 protection, protection services. Protection, my bad, sorry. 205 protection services. I have a motion from Mr. Hernandez. May I have a second? I'll second. I have a second from Mr. Martinez. All in favor say aye. Discussion. Discussion. I'm sorry, any discussion? Well, I'd just like to comment that based on the findings, and I don't know if um, we were gonna display that for the community to see on the um, the references that we listed. There were just a couple of points that I wanted to, to make comment on. Uh, you know, looking at the, the Can you email it to Mr. Henry? We'll get it up shortly, sir, if you want to continue. Okay. So just some comments is I, I was looking through the information and, and uh, what I saw was that the um, the district that the re that's being referenced by some of the, the by 205 of course are a little bit smaller uh not to the scale of of our district versus the uh, the uh, current provider mlg that they do uh, provide service to districts of a larger scale therefore i think they have a little bit more uh, resources available to them the, that's the first item second item that that kind of concerns me is the the fact that uh, 205 uh, does not stipulate a change in, in rate for the um, for the uh, overtime rate and so that would signify in my opinion that they're pretty much footing that bill um, I don't know that 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 is wise uh, or, or how they're going to handle that but that's concerning I just want to make sure that uh, because of that, we're, our district is not left out hanging uh, with a lack of, of resources. And finally, uh, I know that the, the wishes of the committee 
that reviewed this this process and and did what they they needed to look at uh, were in favor of MLG. So I think those are our three three points to consider. Uh, I'd also like to thank the committee for taking the time uh, to review the the proposals and uh, thank them for their efforts in in presenting that to us and, and making their recommendation. Okay. Any other discussion? Um, yes, yes. I would like to address um, actually the same thing with that Mr. Acosta uh, touched base on. Uh, first of all, thank you to the committee for their uh, for their time and uh, and the discussion of uh, reviewing you know of this RFP. I do have a question on the overtime, and I I looked at it and looked at it again. It just didn't um, the tabulation just it you know it. it I just couldn't make sense of it. So I reached out to Ms. Mendiola and I reached out to Mr. Torres as to how are they calculating the overtime. Can you please clear it up for me? Or maybe one of the uh, members of the committee could, could clear up the, uh, the overtime for, for the officers. I can have Mr. Mendez come up. The invoices, uh, and I know Mr. Canales, the invoices come to you. Uh, then they go to the business office. So either Mr. Canales or Mr. Mendez may be able to answer your questions. Sure. Can you, uh, both of you, come up to the podium, please? What was it, if you want to ask I, the particular I, question? I don't Lord? necessarily need to know the amount of overtime. Uh, I need to know how, how is it calculated? What is, the rates are off. Is this time and a half for overtime so, or is it? So if you look at, I know, I don't, I'm not sure if it was included in this week's packet, but in the, the, the previous packet that was included, it listed the rate that the, the vendor listed as their uh, regular rate and their overtime rate. So anything over 40 hours was gonna get paid the overtime rate, <clears throat> uh, charged, billed to the district at the overtime rate. Uh, the actual employees, they don't get paid the, for example, 025 security. Their regular rate is $10 an hour. This, the security guard isn't getting $10 an hour. They're getting minimum wage. Uh, so then on top of that, state law, say, state law states that they need to pay them time and a half for any hours worked over 40. So then the company would actually pay them the, the time and a half for those hours worked over 40. So just to clarify, and, and because that's a broad statement, I don't know if, if that company actually pays minimum wage to all their employees. Did they verify that or yes. is that? Yes, when we, we asked, when we're doing So there's the, no employees that make more than minimum wage like a captain, the, the a- The supervisors. Super, the Correct. supervisors make yeah. a little bit more. All other security is paid minimum wage. Correct. Correct. So then, um, and then did we verify that with the other company? Do the, they, what their rate, what their normal hourly rate is? The standard? other company was? Yes, do we know their standard hourly rate for their employees? On or does average, it fluctuate based on employee experience? Yes, it does. Okay. So, so it's not necessarily, Mr. Canales, you can step up to the mic, sir, and comment if you need to, if you know the answer. Are we talking about MLG? Yes, we are okay, talking about our uh, current company. Do we okay. know what the hourly rate is for their different? Ten dollars and thirty cents is what I've seen on the, on the. Okay. Yes. And then the overtime is thirteen dollars and thirty cents. Okay, but we don't know no. how much the employee no, is on paid. No, I have not been privileged. <clears throat> I have not privileged uh, been privileged to that information. Okay, did we ask that question, Mr. It was a little bit over the minimum wage. Okay, they get more uh, than but minimum it was an wage. Average, uh, it was depending on the number of years that they have been with the company. Okay, so their employees are paid different rates. So depending yes. on the employee's regular rate then overtime rate is there calculated uh, Correct. based on the employee's regular salary, regular um, hourly rate. Correct. Okay. So the rates that we're looking at on paper is just the cost to the district. Uh, we don't have any say so as to how much they're paying their employees. So, so if an employee works an hour, they get paid, they're gonna bill us $10 for that employee. And what he pays the employee is between the employee and the employer. Yeah. But but the uh, but the district is still charged at thirteen thirty for overtime. For the overtime, correct. Correct. Even, even though the employee, maybe because of his hourly rate or he doesn't 
qualify because, I don't know, whatever reason the employer has, um, they, they don't receive the overtime pay even though the employee worked it, but they don't, but they still charge us, but we still pay out. No, Mr. Gonzalez keeps they, track of. No, they do. We, we pay them what they bill. Correct. So, if, so, they, so yeah. we get invoices. And Mr. Canales needs to stay over here, please. But we don't because know. He, but because we don't know for sure. I mean, the they submit invoices, but we don't. Do we see their rate? Do we yes. see their rate of pay for the employee? No, but we see we see the overtime rate. Only. Mr. Canales, can you please stay over here, sir? And can you answer the question with regards to the overtime? What is on the invoice? What is on the invoice with regards to the overtime? Uh, when we're charged, district? when There's we are charged, charged to the district, yes. it's thirteen dollars and thirty cents. Okay, but how is that calculated? How is it broken down on an invoice, on a monthly invoice for us? Name of the employee, and how many hours they worked? How yes, is it? They worked. Yes, it's calculated the amount of hours they work on a two-week basis, and what they pay them. And that's what I'm privileged to that information. That's it, just the main total. But mm -hmm. as far as breakdown per se, no. Okay. So it's the name of the employee and the number of hours yes. they worked. Yes. Okay. So if the employee is paid $10 an hour by the district. Oh, absolutely. The security company pays an employee $8 an hour. We're still paying the bill for this $10 an hour. Yes, sir. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm, I, I'm misunderstood on what I'm trying to say. Um, I'm not really concerned about really what the employee is getting paid. I'm looking at, like you said, what the charge is to the district, right? Mm -hmm. So the standard uh, with 205, the rate that they're charging us, the standard rate and the overtime rate is the same rate. With MLG, the standard rate is 1050 and the overtime rate is higher. It's 1350 granted because they're having to pay overtime. Um, my concern lies with the fact that 205 servicing smaller districts triumph idea that do not have extracurricular activities, they have minimal overtime, that might work. Mercedes ISD, Mission, Sherryland, larger districts, we have two middle schools, we have a lot of activities going on. It's surprising that they're going to be able to sustain the same rate for overtime as they would for a standard rate. There, that's where my concern lies. I don't want to see them come back later or they're not going to have security guards available because they're bidding the same rate, not realizing we're a different entity than Triumph or IDEA. We have a lot of extracurricular activities that go on that require their services. I don't want to go to one of these activities and not have security present because they miscalculated or they misunderstood. There lies my concern. And on that, I, and that, on that note, Mr. Acosta, I do have, I did request uh, from our business office <clears throat> the monthly breakdown of overtime that we've paid out. Uh, just so that the board can um, can get a feel for the number of overtime hours that are worked due to extracurricular or other events. Uh, so, for example, August of 2020, overtime hours were 64 overtime hours. Uh, September of 2020, 16 overtime hours. Um, October, 29 overtime hours. November, 47 overtime hours. Uh, so the list goes on. In May alone, uh, it was over 400 overtime hours because of all of our extracurricular activities, graduation, um, all of the banquets, everything that was held in person. So there is overtime monthly. Um, and so that, again, that just gives uh, the board an understanding of we do, we do have securities for all our extracurricular events sometimes, and we have, a night, we have two night patrols um, and then we have a fire watch sometimes. All of those are taken into account. And those numbers you stated were for the previous year? This is for uh, of August of 2020, 
through May of 2021. At which point we didn't have a full. Correct. This, this know, was only, a, that was without extracurricular uh, at the middle school level and without extracurricular sub varsity. I am concerned with what the employees get paid. I am concerned that they get paid the overtime and overtime is time and a half. Uh, I know that Mercedes ISD will pay the overtime rate because that's who we are. I mean, if we have, if Mercedes ISD, for example, will pay uh, MLG, let's say, uh, 13, what was the rate? I'm sorry, 13.30 in overtime. So time and a half of 10.30, uh, that that leaves uh, what was it 1545 or something like that so that means MLG would just pay two dollars and fifteen cents that is their that is their portion that they would cover if the employee qualifies for that overtime pay there there is a wage and hour law so they have to get paid the overtime At time we have, half, we have yes. no control over that that's, I understand. that's between them and, and their, their employer mm -hmm. and you know, just because that's the rate, that doesn't mean that's what they're getting paid because you have to take into consideration the vehicles, maintenance on the vehicles. Mm -hmm. It's a business. He's got to make a profit on it of or course. else he wouldn't be in business. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So all of that is taken. We don't know what that is. These are the rates that are being charged to the district, and that's why this is my concern, the protection of the district mm -hmm. in being able to have security for these events because they're – quoting the same hourly rate or the same bid mm -hmm. for both uh, regular time and overtime. So as a business owner, if I'm charging you all $10 and then I gotta pay time and a half over here, I'm losing money. And I don't think he's in the business to lose money. And maybe he doesn't realize the amount of overtime that we require in our mm -hmm. district but I'm concerned that we're gonna to get to these events and we're not gonna have security. Well, they're gonna be paying, uh, is it a straight $10? So time and a half of that, I'm just gonna say, t time and a half of that is $15. The district pays $10 and they would pay $5 to, you know, of their portion, if, you know, considering whether they have a vehicle, my gas, I mean, fuel and all that. I mean, there, you know, of course, we, we, we can't tell, we don't know at this point how much of overtime we're going to have, you know. Uh, we can base it on the previous year. Well, yeah. That's good. Yeah, we could, could do that more. too. We could do that too. But that doesn't mean that, that, uh, that they're not going to take care of their employees. I would be concerned that they're not, that, that they're more, that the interest is more about, I mean, yeah, as a good business owner, yeah, you want to make a profit. But you also want to take care, you know, the, you know, it's, you want to take care of your employees. That's bread and butter, you know, pretty much. Mm -hmm. You want to take care of them because they've made your business. So that should be a concern. And, and yeah, that would be my concern if I wasn't getting paid the overtime. If I had a nephew, or I had a son who was starting out, you know, as a young security guard, I would be very concerned with that. So, I mean, that's something, you know, that's just something else that I, um, that I, note, that I noted on, their, um, on the tabulation sheet. And I think you made a good point right there where you said if they're getting 10, you know, that's the rate. And time and a half is 15. That's what I'm getting at. There's a $5 discrepancy there that the company's going to have to pay. Right. That means they're already in the red. Mm -hmm. uh, a, pr a company that's doing that isn't going to be in business very long. And that's my concern. We're going to be left holding a bag if they didn't do their due diligence of looking at this. And, and, you know, at that point, we have to make a decision. But between now and then, we face the risk of having events where we're not going to have sufficient security. And that's my concern. I, I, I get it. I, I mean, I do get your concern, but we also don't know what their financial status is either. So to assume that they're going, they're going to be in the red because they're going to take on $5 for to 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 meet their overtime, um, you know that's that's something that we really we don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I just wanted to make clarification that that's the rate that the district is getting billed. Mm -hmm. That's not specifically the rate that the employee is getting paid. Yeah. I know. For example, the employee could be getting paid eight dollars an hour, so the minimum the time run, time and a half rate would be twelve dollars. Then mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they're not getting paid ten dollars an hour. That's just like Mr. Acosta said. That includes the overhead mm -hmm. uh, in that hourly rate for the workers' comp insurance. I mean, we do require five insurances from them. 
uh, vehicles, uh, payroll taxes, uh, unemployment uh, taxes as well. It's included in the, that ten dollar rate. So the, the 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 rate on the tabulation sheet uh, on the sheet the documentation we, that we were provided is not the actual. That's not the rate of pay then. It's that's just the, a general. Uh, it's the the rate that the district is being billed for that security oh. guard. So you could have several. Um, <clears throat> so they could have several security guards uh, that are out there right now. They were, we're thinking they're getting paid 10:30, and they're actually getting paid. You know, they're actually getting paid eight dollars. You know, eight eight dollars an hour. Correct. So that's mm -hmm. that's about right. That's how. Yes. That's how MLG. Yes. Well, I, all companies. The, all yeah. companies. Or all companies. Like that. Correct. Well, that's not. It's not taking care of the employees. And <laughs> I think that we need to, I mean, I, I understand, Mrs. Delgado, your concern. You have a, you make good points, and so does Mr. Acosta. All in all, we need to consider uh, the safety of the kids and, and, uh, and what the company does for the district. So at this point, I really want to ask the committee, and I'll start with Mr. Canales. Mr. Canales, I want you to tell me why you chose or what the decision you made for MLG and what you, MLG and what, your concern is if if it doesn't go that route right, because um, you work very closely with them and just so that you know we we hear from Ms. Mendiola but I think we need to hear it from the horse's yes. mouth and you need to tell us directly what your big concerns are about All right. it. Right. Uh, thank you board president, Ms. Mendiola, board members, administrators. I do want to start off by saying this. I have been in the district for 30 years. 20 years as an administrator, 10 as a teacher, and by God, I've dealt with security every year. So I know companies that come and go. And I can tell you something. This company is genuine. I like the way they represent themselves. They are proactive in their approach, and they're very, very professional. I have never seen a company like this but you know what, even I learned. This company is different. It cares. These are my little notes that I have here. The owner has a wealth of experience. He's been a previous police officer. He has various contracts with school districts. So he knows what he's talking about. And these are the companies he has uh, contracts with. Sherilyn ISD, Mission, South Texas ISD, Vanguard, Hidalgo ISD, uh, Juan Diego Academy, and some uh, uh, locations with the City of Mission and City of Ember Edinburgh. He knows what's going on in the districts. In comparison to the big districts, we're kind of small, but he can address our needs. I like the fact that when we come together with the supervisor and himself, his meetings are intentional. He places the guards where they need to be in the schools. He matches personalities. He just doesn't put anybody in the schools. He has good dialogue with me. And I know what type of individual those campuses are receiving. I like that about the owner. He's proactive that way. He's professional. The other thing that I like about him, that company, there's always a two-way communication. In the past, it was always a phone call, well, this guy's going to be sent here, this and there. No, that is insufficient. I want to see that person. I want to talk to that supervisor. Our communication takes me places. It keeps me informed. This company does do that along with the supervisors and his administrative staff. I have seen him come to me, I have seen him go to the schools, and that is a proactive approach. They care. Furthermore, this company reminds me of my own events that are happening in the district. They have our calendars. They know these are the events that are happening in Canales. How many guards do you want here? Every week. I meet with my, with my supervisor from the campuses. 
and we go over all the events that are going on in the district and how many guards need to be placed. I have never seen that in a company. This company cares. We have a map. We draw every placement of every guard. We know where the safety needs to be. We know how to take care of our kids. I feel confident this company can take care of our needs. And I like the way they train this. Uh, they train uh, uh, the guards. Uh, normally, I do the training in the past with the pre previous companies, not this company. This company, because Mr. of its Mr. wealth Mr. of Canales, knowledge. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir, but we just, we just needed a, as okay. to why the committee okay. made the selection and, and. I overdo it. Yes, just. <laughs> All right, man, just to let you know, the, they have good trainings, good trainings, conflict resolution, sexual harassment, uh, clear bag procedures. That's what we're starting. I already trained people already on it. And the guard was uh, the guards were very very instrumental. Also, ma'am, main thing. This company builds relationships. I like that. They're positive, proactive, and they're responsive in a timely manner. And that's why the committee, they saw that they wanted that, and we selected this company. And we went forward with it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Canales. Any further discussion? Um, yes, Mr. Canales. That, that's a uh, you know. You know, that's a great description of the company, and, yes. uh, you know, I, I can tell. I, I know that those guard, security guards out there have always been very professional. Yes. They're very respectful, um, and, and they take care of us. But um, the thing is that you, you also mentioned that you mentioned a lot. You talked about the owner, how well you liked him, how he trains. And, but I, I, would like to, I would like to say, and I would like to just point out that you said we. I mean, your principles, your principles, um, you, if you, if you set that expectation for any vendor that comes in, and in this case, of course, your security, security company, if you set that expectation for them and you tell them this is what we want, this is what we expect from you, then, of course, it, it needs to get done. That, that, yes. that needs to get done, right? And you also work with them, and your principals and your assistant principals, they work with them so that they know that this is the expectation of the company and this is what they're supposed to be doing. Uh, the training, the, all that, it's, it's a good thing that the owner is so proactive about it, but every security company, they're, they're, they are, that is their specialty. So, you know, other companies can co come in and you know, they're trained as well, and, and it's just a matter of communication, and it's just a matter of staying on top of things. You've worked with many security companies. I, I can see that. Um, some of them have not. I, I've experienced a couple of things when my kids were in, were in high school, but, um, you know, those were, those were small things, and they were brought to, to the attention, and they were corrected. So, you know, I, I just, uh, but, but I will say about this security company, these not the owner because I don't know the owner, but I know the security guards out there. Yes. And I know that they have done very, very well by the district. So, yes. that, so that's why I have taken you know, quite some time to just uh, look over a lot of things on, on both companies. So I and I appreciate your time, sir. Thank you. I'd just like to add a couple of uh, words. I think uh, I want this to be on the record. Uh, the previous meeting we had a discussion about the security guard and there were, I just brought up a question that goes, I was waiting for some information. I did receive the information, so I'm very grace, uh, grateful for that. I just, uh, I just wanted to make sure that it's on the record that uh, I did receive the information because there were some comments in there that I did not appreciate it. Comments like, I don't know what Mr. Nunn is talking about. So uh, it is answered, and I hope for the future considerations that uh, We'll take care of business. And that's all I got to say, and I yield. Okay. Any other discussion? I do have one more question, and I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm going to address this to Mr. Mendez. Um, on this, um, on the tabulation sheet, you know, yes. where you did the, the, the rating, you know? Correct. Um, there's an item here. It's item number, number five, the vendor's past relationship with the district. And points available on this is six. 205 security received a one. 
And of course, MLG received a six, and then the other vendor received a one. You know, can you explain to me that one? I mean, what, what was the rating? I mean, since, since the vendor has, has the vendor had the experience with the district? So the question is the vendor's past relationship with the district. With the district, yeah. Um, so how each, did they get with that one? Each committee member, uh, what's displayed there is the, uh, the committee average. Uh -huh. So at the time when we were doing the tabulations, uh, I explained to each committee member that it was up to them if they wanted to do uh, how they wanted to rank or award those points to those that we haven't worked with in the past. So some committee members decided to go ahead and stay true to the word of the question and awarded zero points. And I believe there was one of the committee members that awarded three points. So that's where you got your average. Uh, it rounded up to about 1.2 uh, but once we rounded up to the whole number, it was one. So, so it was an average. So that Correct. was an average round. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion? Any more questions for Mr. Mendez? Or any other committee uh, member? One, one, one quick question. Sure, Mr. Yes, that, that is correct, sir. Mr. Garza. So Twenty-five thousand. Yes, sir. Okay. Any further discussion? What is what? What are we going to get for twenty-five thousand? What's you know what? What what, what are we going to get for twenty-five thousand dollars? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking. I'm sorry, Mr. Garza. I, I misunderstood. I was asking. It was a question to Ms. Mendiola, uh, or to Mr. Mendez. What is it that we're getting for twenty-five thousand dollars extra? The difference in the pricing was basically the overtime rate. The, the, the regular rate and the overtime rate. So the regular rate um, for 205 is $10 an hour. Mm -hmm. The regular rate for MLG is 1050. So that's the 50 cent difference. Okay. And then the overtime rate for 205 is $10 an hour. And the overtime rate for MLG is how much, Ralph? 1450 or 13? 1330? 1350. So that's the difference. So when you calculate it in the end, based on after-school programs, um, ACE, the ACE program, mm -hmm. which we, we won't have, but we will continue after-school programs, mm -hmm. extracurricular. When you tabulate it for the year, the difference in pricing between those two companies is a $25,000 difference okay. for the year. So we're going um, 10, at this, currently they're at 1030. Mm -hmm. security, security officers are at 1030 with MLG, so it would bump it up to 1050. Yes, ma'am. So it would be like 20 They're seven. increasing their... They're increased yes. 20 cents, which we're not really, really sure if that's what they're getting Correct. paid. But. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Garza. Uh, any further discussion from the board? Okay, I have a motion from Mr. Hernandez and a second by, from, from Mr. Martinez for 205 Protection Services. All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Anything else, Mrs. Mendiola? Those are the only, that's the only item on the agenda, ma'am. Okay. Uh, may I have a motion to adjourn this special meeting? I so move. I have a motion for Mr. Hernandez. May I have a second? Second. I have a second for Mr. Garza. All in favor say aye. 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 Any, op aye. any opposed? Motion passes. It is now 6.05. And this meeting is adjourned. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.